So hi and welcome to another Thrift Thursday. Today I'm going to take a look at this keyboard from Real Internet Ideas. Who we sent this along for me to take a look. This is the RK908 for Mechanical Keyboard. So this keyboard is the 87 button combination. It misses the numeric keypad, so it's more of a compact keyboard form here. It comes with the ABS keycaps, and it comes with an equivalent Cherry MX Blue mechanical switch. If you haven't already been following my Thrift Thursday or my Tech Tuesday, which is more premium products, hit the subscribe button so you get the information on the videos as soon as they come out, and you can take a look and see what's around in the market at the minute. I've done certainly done some more videos on budget gaming keyboards like this from a full mechanical if you're interested in this kind of product. This keyboard currently works on Windows. There isn't any notification of it working on Mac OS or Linux, but that doesn't necessarily mean it won't. I mean, at the end of the day, it's a USB keyboard, so I don't see why it wouldn't. The keyboard itself doesn't require any software to reinstall. It's, it's fully controlled by the FM button here on the keyboard, and you can cycle through the lighting configurations here, and you can also turn them off if you don't want that. So on these videos, I'm going to go through some options of what I've found with this keyboard and how I've been, how I thought when I've used it. Give you an idea really of what it's like to use in a day-to-day -day scenario. I'll show you some gaming clips as well. So stick around for that so you can see whether you think this will be useful to you or not. So the price of this keyboard is $27.99 on Amazon at the moment. And in the US, it should be around $30. US Like I said, it comes with a double shot keycap here, which is ABS. It also has some slight wobble on the keycap but nothing that would cause you any problems. It certainly feels solid when you're typing on it. One of the problems I have with the aluminium top plate, which even the K95 from Corsair has, is they have a screw in the top left corner near the escape key. Now this one is slightly more visible. It's in between the F1 key and the escape key, and that kind of annoys me a little bit because I like to see it kind of hidden under the escape key. So that's one of my little gripes. Other than that, the only real other marks on this keyboard are the logo near the cursor keys. Other than that, it's quite a subtle keyboard. It's got a nice aluminium finish with a black plastic base. So overall the looks are quite nice and simple on this keyboard. The keyboard itself has little flex. Even when pressing in the middle here, the keyboard has a slight little bit of flex, but it's still pretty sturdy. So this is built quite rugged for a budget keyboard. So like most keyboards, you can also adjust the height on this. It's got two feet on the back that are only one setting, where you can basically raise the keyboard up slightly to give it more of an angled approach. And on the bottom of it again you've got two rubber feet at the front it would be nice to see a few more rubber feet to stop it maybe sliding around a little bit although those two rubber feet do generally keep it in place quite well here as i've said there are several lighting options i'll go through these now and show you what they're like The keyboard I've got here is a UK version, although it has an act symbol on both the double crow and the two key, so it could also be a US keyboard layout here. They seem to have mixed the layout to give you the options that you require depending on what country you're in here, so that's quite good, nice to see, as well as media keys on the top here. So on the top media keys, you've got the Internet Explorer, email, calculator. You've also got a volume up and down and a mute key as well. You can't push track forward, track backward, say for Spotify here, but that's not the end of the world. Would have been nice to have seen those as well. Maybe in the next version, we'll see those going forward. We have lost objective Edward. Oh, 
The cable is fully braided. It comes in at just under two meters and it's about one to two millimeters thick. So it's quite a thin cable. So it should be good for routing around your desk with that additional length and the thickness as well. Most keyboards in this range and even some of the premium ones seem to have quite a short cable. It's nice to see here that real internet idea here of giving it a decent length cable. So my room audio here is about 38 to 40 decibels. When I'm typing here, this keyboard, to give you an idea of the kind of noise level, comes in at around 58 decibels. So it's certainly a noticeable keyboard when you're typing, but it gives you that true kind of feel of mechanical, a bit like the MX Blues, which is what, you know, real internet idea are trying to go here for, that you, you feel like you're typing on a mechanical keyboard. So doing a quick measurement here for the force of the key, the actuation pressure on these keys is 65 grams, which is quite good, probably slightly heavier than an MX, but still a decent weight here. You can certainly tell when you're pressing these keys. So the length of this keyboard comes in at 350 millimeters in length. The width of this keyboard comes in at 120 millimeters in width. So the keyboard plate comes in at 10 millimeters from the base. And if you add in the key itself, it comes in at 25 millimeters high at the front. A key height is 15 millimeters high. The rear height of this keyboard with the legs up comes in at 30 millimeters high and with the keys, it's 50 millimeters high. So let's take a look at what's in the box. So that's it for this video. If you'd like to see me doing something else, some kind of other tests on these keyboards, let me know. I'll certainly try my best and add those to the review process to give you a better idea. And until I see you next time, thanks a lot. Don't forget to sub and like, and I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.